Today we have a very special event. Um, I think this is probably the first time in the history of the Yale Council of Southeast Asian Studies Brown Bag Series that we have undergraduate speakers. Um, in fact, I, we rarely have graduate student speakers, um, but I was so inspired when I heard about the work that is going on by these students at the Fulbright University of Vietnam in collaboration with colleagues in Myanmar and other organizations across Southeast Asia, um, that it really struck a chord with me about the importance of you know, inter-Asian student solidarity, especially in these times. It's something we often talk about as scholars, about the importance of inter-Asian research, right? Um, but in a moment of decolonizing the academy, rethinking Southeast Asian studies, to see students from Vietnam who are taking an interest in Myanmar, um, to me is a signal of the important directions that scholarship and activism and thinking and work needs to be going in the future. So I was really excited to be able to find a slot in our brown bag to afford the possibility for today's uh, event. Um, the event will be inspired by a zine on life in post-coup Myanmar that the Phuong An and Tham Nguyen have uh, been working on uh, with other collaborators at Fulbright University and with a collaborator in Myanmar. Um, and uh, uh, they'll be talking about that today, but let me just say a few words about who they are. So Phuong An Nguyen is a history sophomore at Fulbright University in Vietnam, whose current interest is in human rights in Southeast Asia. Tham Nguyen is a poet, art writer, apprentice curator based in Ho Chi Minh City. His practice merges creative writing, critical theories and art history to investigate Vietnamese and Southeast Asian modern and contemporary cultural spectacles in light of neoliberalism and globalization. They're gonna talk for about 20 minutes about their zine project. Then after that, we will also be joined by Lor Siegel who is a journalist and founder of Visual Rebellion, a grassroots movement of creators for creators. And they, they state on their website that they believe that photography, film, and art have the power to create change for the better. They are dedicated to helping Burmese creatives by providing a platform for their work in opposition to the military junta. Extremely timely and important work. So I'm really excited to have Laura joining us here as well. Um, if internet conditions allow, we will also have a guest who will be going by the name of Marla May, um, hopefully joining when the internet allows from Myanmar um, and joining in on the conversation. Um, so the structure of our event will basically be for the first 20 minutes or so, we'll hear about the zine, then we'll hear a little bit about visual rebellion, and then we'll quickly turn it after about half an hour total to an open Q&A discussion. And we really hope that that will be a dynamic conversation that brings in all kinds of voices um, during the conversation. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Fung An and Thum. Hello, Thank you everyone. for the amazing uh, introduction. Um, I don't get can go first. Yeah, let me handle the introduction. So hello everyone, I'm Tham Nguyen and Fulano. Thank you for the very kind and warm introduction from Eric and uh, the, the uh, lunch factors in general. And thank you everyone for taking your time and be here with us today. So let's get straight to the point. Uh, Adam Fulano has been working for a consecutive period of four months since September, uh, I think it's September, October of, of 20. 21. As soon as we know and understand a little bit more about what's happening in Myanmar after the coup that took over the government in February 2021, and we felt like there's an urgent need for us to do something that make this specific issue visible to the international community. So yeah, let me just quickly share my screen right now. Okay, Fungan, you can start talking about uh, the project. So, uh, thank you, Tom. So, uh, our project is an independent project. Started out as um, a very uh, personal project to both me and Tom because uh, we feel very strongly about what is happening in Myanmar and uh, through our 
personal encounters with um, the people who work uh, on Myanmar and uh, who is currently living in Myanmar, uh, we, we decided to start this project. And our project is a nonprofit, independent and overarching project that highlights the extreme violence in Myanmar, which has not been fully covered by me international media. Um, can you move to the next slide, please? So uh, for today, uh, after the introduction, we will talk about uh, why, why we started the zine, why it is a zine, and what are the contents that we will walk you through the content uh, in the zine and we will share more about the insight into like the process of making the zine, conducting the interviews and uh, even the translation as well as the designing uh, process of the zine. Uh, after that, we will have a small discussion, which I hope to be, uh, I, I would, uh, I really look forward to uh, to have with the youth from um, Southeast Asia, uh, like um, visual rebellions and uh, uh, and students from Southeast Asia movement from Yale. Um, and lastly, we will talk. We'll um, spend five minutes to send our appreciation to the people uh, who have helped us with uh, the production of the zine, as well as who have helped us to promote the zine as well. Thank you. So for, uh, as I uh, shared a bit before, uh, the reason why we started this project is because we felt intrigued by the recent youth resistance campaigns in Myanmar since the February coup. And we are just a group of undergraduates and artists uh, with support from uh, the students from Yangon University, and we decided to initiate a multi multimedia project that centers around a hybrid artistic non-scholarly zine publication. This project is meant to direct attention to the current political turmoil across uh, Myanmar with the Southeast Asia Jews at the target in audience. And uh, we, uh, that said, we intend to collect stories and perspectives from people of Myanmar who are living amidst the escalating violence, as well as uh, we want to include uh, international and regional stances and responses to the humanitarian crisis as well. If we uh, have uh, we are, have access to the um, resources and all of these will be communicated through a multi multimedia project consisting of a series of events and activities centered around a zine publication. Uh, so uh, we have received a lot of support uh, from our uh, organizations from Fulbright and as well as, well as from uh, students from University of Yangon uh, and we believe that in the possibility, in the possibility and long-term impact of this project as to surface and highlight the voices of the people uh, living in, uh, in post-school Myanmar. So from Fulbright, we have Fulbright Historical Society, an undergraduate community started in Fulbright aiming to promote the history discipline and its scholarship. Um, Fulbright Historical Society also provides history enthusiasts with sufficient support to nurture their interests and ability to thrive in both an academic and professional setting. And we have Fulbright Art Lab, a student-run organization based in Fulbright University, Vietnam, founded in 2018. And Art Lab has coordinated numerous events and programs such as film screening, panel discussions, exhibitions, aiming to create a connection between art labors and communities in Vietnam. Um, and we received a lot of support from Interim University Council, University of Yangon, um, and IUC UI is recognized as the legal administrator of, U, of Yang, University of Yangon by National University uh, National Uni Unity Government, and they are working accordingly with the Energy Ministry of Education and also independently. Uh, IUC UCUY has many working processes and has different branches. One of them is International Cooperation Team, 
in which we, they try to connect with overseas universities to support our, their democratic movements, to fundraise and to raise awareness about not accepting non-CDM military supporters. And the moment that um, I talked with uh, my friends from Yangon University about the project, uh, she immediately communicated back with the uh, university council who, uh, who uh, or, which includes uh, faculty, staffs, and also students from the university. And we received full support from uh, IUCUY. So a lot of appreciation to uh, IUCUY for helping us with the Z. So all of the intellectual uh, properties produced in the zine publication, as well as uh, in our project will be used to raise funds for the, for the IDPs in, in, in Myanmar. And we have listed, uh, uh, we, we will, um, all donations sent to my PayPal account will be uh, distributed equally to four organizations uh, listed below uh, the, for the Chin uh, state, it will be the Tantlang Placement Affair Committees. Uh, for Kachin, is the Kachin Relief Fund. Karen is the Doc Kalu Network, and for Karen, Karen is the Karen Guys. And uh, we are waiting for a an official issue from uh, bilingual issue from uh, IUCUY to um, credify uh, to to. To, to confirm my re re reliability in distributing the fund sent to my pay, via my PayPal account to these uh, organizations. And here is so, our, yeah. Okay. So this is here is the interface of, of, of our website and through this website, and you can see there's a, a, a tiny QR code on the right side of it. You'll be able to access our website, which also houses uh, our zine publications. And we'll talk about the zine publication in a few minutes. So uh, let's talk a little bit about our own, you know, like personal encounters with uh, like our very first knowledge of Myanmar and what's happening in the country. Uh, in 2021, I participated in a, an art writing symposium that contains a lot of like curators, and art laborers and artists across Southeast Asia. And, and we got together in this specific program or, uh, called Term and Condition uh, Art Reading and Publishing in Southeast Asia, organized by uh, Southeast Up Now and uh, uh, London School of the Art uh, under uh, the organization of After All. So, in this very specific program, we talk a lot about, you know, like, the, the, the state of, of cultural production in contemporary South sort of Asian as well. A lot of, you know, the history that underlines this very, you know, process of development. And as soon as I had a talk with a specific, this very specific like Burmese uh, scholar who just got back from getting her degree in the US. She got back, right back to Myanmar and started working there as a teacher and also in parallel with raising fund for uh, the, the 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 resistance, which is something very powerful that I had not known before, because a lot of you know like a lot of the people who joined the revolution are actually people at my age, and I can just not fathom how that very audacity and you know a belief in something that is judicious for by like, a collective you know democracy would be that powerful to mobilize such a massive you know, number of people. And especially, again, those are people at my age, the youngsters are putting themselves out there and facing the risks and seeing the brutality you know, committed on a daily basis. So I, I decided that's the moment for me to get to know a lot more about what's happening in Myanmar. And most of my information comes from Instagram because we are like Gen Z people, right? So we do a lot of Instagrams. And, and it's very interesting to see that a lot of these reports from you know, independent journalists often come from Instagram 
accounts that are, you know, often private so that we can see the contents without censorship. And those become, you know, like my main sources of information to keep me updated about the situation and like which regions of Myanmar is turning into a war zone and, 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 and stuff like that. And in light of, you know, the, the, the Ukraine-Russia conflict that is happening recently, you know, the news of Myanmar, and especially there's a, one specific article about our sensitivity being, you know, in prison or being charged with three years in prisons, which has made it to the news for around like three days before sliding back into, you know, the, uh, the, the virtual archive of the internet which is something that I cannot really understand because like, the level of brutality and violence is, you know, just beyond our understanding, especially in the context of the 21st century. So we decided to, this is the moment when we brought all of this, we bring all of this to the light. So Fung An, if you can talk a little bit about your personal experience with this as well. So in uh, fall of 2021, uh, I participated in a, uh, a, a, a one credit course by Cornell University, also the Southeast Asia program from Cornell. And uh, I, the course was called Scholar Activism and the Spring Revolution in Myanmar. And that, uh, that in that course, I and a, a, a friend from University of Yangon was like the only undergraduate students there. And uh, after the course, I felt uh, de like deeply inspired. And then I like for a country like right in Southeast Asia um, and uh, like only two and a half hours flight from, from my home country, uh, hometown, uh, people are like, uh, being killed, being abducted, and uh, being burned alive, um, I, and I I couldn't like comprehend the the what what the like I I feel very deeply for what is happening there, but I couldn't comprehend like how such thing could happen uh, for. In, in a place that's so near to me. And uh, I right after the course, I, uh, with Fulbright Historical Society's help, I uh, organized a webinar on humanitarian crisis in Southeast, uh, uh, in Myanmar. And um, after that, uh, uh, after the, the webinar, I felt like I need to do something more, not just stopping at like a small webinar, so I, I I asked them about uh, do you want to do a project with me and we both feel very strongly about what's happening in Myanmar. So we got together and uh, after I communicated uh, that our project, which started as like two students from Vietnam doing an independent project with uh, with with my friend from uh, Yangon University, and she asked if we wanted to collaborate and here we are, we have this project after like four months of uh, working uh, very closely together with uh, the Yangon students. So in the next part of the presentation, we'll talk a little, a little more deeply about like the process of us, like, like you know, like coordinating with uh, people that is very far away from us based on merely the internet connections, which is another very interesting aspect of you know, the, the, the collaborative kind of effort within this project. So you see on the screen right now is the outline of our manuscript of what we're having right now in the zine. And keep in mind that a lot of these content are in the zine, but some other you know, future informations and, and concepts will be posted on, on our uh, website. So please stay tuned for that. But for now, we'll talk a little bit about the zine. And for the interest of time, we will just read through several sections that we think is like best would best highlight the the the, the uh, what was interesting about the zine itself. So so why zine? Uh, why? So I don't think people would be very familiar with like this very specific type of publication. But as a person who worked in the arts, 
for quite a while right now. Zine is something that we as art labor has been taking into consideration when, when, when we approach a topic that has a, a relatively you know, a different kind of approach compared to other traditional publication. And now we are taking into account the urgency of, of, the, of the series of events that's happening in Myanmar. And we also wanted to, to bring our own narrative into this and to, to make it as flexible and at the same time as creative and as critical as we can so that we are not bound to any kind of like standards or you know limitation whatsoever so we decided to opt with zine which is a free flow and kind of like non uh uh regulated kind of form of publication and and, and you will see what what zine looks like in the next part so uh the first thing in our zine is, uh, I think, Fungan, you, you can talk about this very specific interview and the process of our friend Costa has gone through in order to, and also the story behind it. Um, so uh, we, uh, I work closely with uh, Costa, a student from Yangon University, and to, to produce the interview with the IDPs uh, and the interview with the students um, from uh, uh, the, ID, uh, the, the CDM students. And for uh, the interview with the IDPs, we have one is the um, a story, an, a, a small anecdote of a volunteer in an, in an IDP camp in Myanmar. Uh, and uh, she shared about the, her experience, her Christmas celebration experience at, um, at, at the, the IDP camp, which was um, majority Christian. Um, and uh, also at that, in that day, as uh, we, we are updated, were updated on Instagram about the burning of 35 uh, people trying to, on, while they are being on their way to uh, fleeing to an IDP camp, they were caught by the um, the, the Tamado soldiers and they were burned alive on the truck. Uh, after hearing that news, and I and like after we, we just had a meeting the the day before, so that when she came to the Christmas celebration. She can collect the, the the Costa can collect the the, the story for our Zim publication and right before right after that the day after, um, we had we received the news of thirty five people being burned to life and uh, we decided to like incorporate it into uh, the 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 story about Christmas celebration and yeah we work very closely like we talk almost like every day to get updated with each other, to share our, uh, to, to share the experience living uh, in uh, the in post-school Myanmar and living in um, uh, the states where, um, the, where, where um, ethnic conflicts uh, happen alongside with uh, the struggle for democracy. Yeah. Uh, so for to produce the interviews, uh, beside from like working, working very closely with each other, talking almost every day, we also have uh, the ethical conduct uh, consultation with our uh, psychology professor from U Fulbright University, Vietnam, Dr. Jill Schooltip. And because this is a non-scholarly uh, publication, um, we, 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 uh, consult with uh, Dr. Jill for guidelines and ethical in interviews uh, to protect our interviewees and interviewers solely, uh, like because we uh, because um, we we are so afraid of like hurting them any more uh, from what they are experienced already have already been experiencing uh, by like. What we by by uh, 
the interviews that we want to do. So um, the, the interviews uh, are not IRB approved or it is not, um, not scholarly. It, it is, they are just uh, consulted and, uh, follow, and conducted following the ethical conduct guidelines for, um, for, for research, but it, they are not uh, research material. So alongside with the interview with the IDP Frontier that we just uh, presented, we also have uh, several other interviews with different person in different walks of life, possessing different professions, uh, and and how they all came together into a very kind of uh, kind of unified kind of like state of being in the context of post coup Myanmar, and here uh, like I. Like I mentioned in, 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 in the beginning, I have interviewed with a Burmese art scholar who just finished her, uh, uh, her degree uh, in, in, in the state uh, and just literally just came back to, 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 to Myanmar and started working like a part-time job alongside with you know, like doing everything that she can to raise fund and raise awareness about what's happening in Myanmar. So here in the interview by Diana Zawin, I tried to go very deeply into her academic interests, especially given that her, you know, like background or in Burmese culture and, and Burmese history in association with, uh, you know, like visual theories and, and art history in general. So a lot of these interesting perspectives will be covered by Diana alongside with the, her contemporary take on the uh, the coup d'etat as well as the revolution, uh, the the spring revolution of 2021. And uh, alongside with that, we also have other uh, interviews with uh, an undergraduate student uh, at the University of Yangon, as well as a high school high school student, which you can also find in the zine. And uh, I think another interview with uh, a, a PDF soldier. Uh, where they will, uh, where he would talk about uh, what Dari Rat looks like for a soldier who is currently stationing in the jungle and how, and also this, as you can see on the screen, those are the images of uh, the, uh, the the resistance soldier or training, uh, where they are training and how they're training. And you can find all of these details in that, inter in that specific interview as well. So the zine is a kind of a, 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 a hot, part of a lot of different things that we think that would best portray uh, life in post-coup Myanmar. So we also include a poems written in the form of an obituary dedicated to a fallen soldier. And we have like, a Burmese version of it as well as a English translated version which was translated by Anyo who unfortunately could not be here today. But also please have a look at that if you're interested as well. And we also have commentaries because I, I myself as, as an, an art student, so I'm always interested in how the relationship between art and you know, social construction, especially at the time where revolutionary spirit are very heated in Myanmar and the brutality of the tap motors keep rising, rising every day. It's very essential to see how art has become one of the essential instruments to look at the entire spectacle of, of Myanmar as well as, as a means of resisting. So you can, you can find some of that in, in, in my essay where I discuss two specific artists that I think best represent uh, the idea that uh, the, the idea about art is a, is a site of resisting. And uh, this is a very interesting uh, article provided by Funan, so I think we can talk about it as well. And then this especially connect with the, I think what Eric has called by like, Soviet Asian Youth Solidarity. So, so Funan, can you talk a little bit about your article? Thank you, Aintam. So I, uh, because uh, well, most of the content in our zine publication are very, are quite heavy in terms of like emotions and, content so I decided to write something 
still serious, but um, it is it has more of a uh, mm, humorous uh, and comedic uh, kind of vibe to it. And we I, I wrote about the mimiology of the Spring Revolution and how the youth uh, um, use their that the young people use the their their. Um, their their the nature their their uh, canon language of uh, talking with uh, international communities international youth uh, using memes to to use those into like um, doing revolution and as well as raising awareness about what is happening in their country um, and also uh, I think you um, to uh, people can. Uh, go to our website and read our zine to know more about uh, how uh, about the commentaries. But I think uh, it is time for us to um, give the spotlight to the to to the visual rebellion teams, so they can share a bit more about uh, their project as well as their uh, organization. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. And we do uh, some similar things, so it's interesting. So I'm, I will introduce myself. I'm Laure Sigel. I'm a French correspondent in, based in Bangkok for eight years. And um, I was also, uh, I had the chance to be a, a media teacher in Yangon before the coup in 2019. Um, so I kept in touch with my students. And uh, after the coup, a few days after, um, some of them reached to me because they simply did um, the work they have been trained for. So they went in the streets in every hometown uh, they were. F so, so as you know, COVID uh, stopped most of studies of um, and most students had to go back to their hometown. So um, when the coup happened, they were in their hometown um, because study was was interrupted already before. Um, and so when it happened, they spontaneously went out to take pictures, to film, um, because they wanted to document this and because some of them were already working for the local media. Uh, so we have mostly people uh, in, um, in the ethnic states, so Rakhine and Shan and Kareni and Magwe, Sagain, um, and one or two persons in Yangon. So the idea is that we would cover places that were not um, the main areas and where the information was um, very difficult to get. So the best uh, way is to have local trained young journalists who have connection, who know the territory, who know the local language. Uh, so it started, I will, I will try to be quick. It started, um, we called it the Myanmar Photo Project Collective. Uh, can I share screen maybe? Um, so I can just show you how it's, <clears throat> yeah? Okay. Um, the Myanmar project, Street Rough Protest. So I told them 12, uh, we work with 10 people at the beginning in all these areas. So every day they would go out and they would send picture information and together we would um, the caption. So we have all dates, all, uh, all context, or location, and uh, we translated every slogan to right at the beginning. So the, the beginning of the project, so this is Tanve, Rakhine State, the first days, and we did, I will do it quick for you, but um, this is Yangon, <clears throat> and uh, we did 15 episodes um, of archival picture from st street protests from everywhere. And we stopped, I will show you the last episode. We stopped early May, um, end of March, because as you might know, March 27, um, first day in Myanmar, it was extremely violent, the repression. Um, and at this point, it was just too dangerous to go in the streets. And also in most places, the big gathering stops. So we, we the last episode uh, was, um, a silent strike actually with just um, as we talk about creativity people found ways uh, to express 
things uh, in a different way with no people uh, to, to avoid danger of, of arrest or worst. So this was against uh, um, a demonstration against sexual harassment for women who were arrested in jail and uh, because there was big um, big scandal at the, in April. Um, and then we had um, the last picture from Mandale <clears throat> on the monk and um, it stopped with the uh, guerrilla strike in, uh, so this was already um, a big repression in Mandale. And then on early May, we got the last picture from our journalist in, uh, in Tamwe, <clears throat> um, where it just went very violent. So, you know, it, it went for the flash strike. So 15 people went away. And even then, uh, even on this day, people got arrested. <clears throat> so it got very dangerous. So we, we switch um, to, um, first we um, collaborate with the NGO Human Rights in the Picture, we based in the Netherlands, and for decades they are helping filmmakers in uh, countries where you have a, a huge political shock where people cannot work anymore, <clears throat> and then to, to help them save the footage, to help them do, an, do something with it, edit and uh, give an, an audience to, the, to their movies. So we did the photo part and uh, we created, um, sorry, um visual rebellion no so this is um this is um collaboration between us uh, between our collective of photojournalists and uh, this organization who help filmmakers so the um, nadja uben who is the founder uh, she helped um pretty renowned burmese filmmaker that we will keep his name anonymous to um, to make his documentary because for months he, he filmed in uh, in Yangon, in Shan State, in Karen State, and then he finally came to Thailand and now he's, he's safe in another country. But uh, uh, we accompany him all the way so he can finish his movie. And um, so this is the website. And so, so the second thing we decide to switch is that because we cannot send people in the streets to cover street protests anymore because it's so unsafe, uh, um, we switch to research. So as you know, most, most international organizations cannot send their people inside Myanmar to get uh, information on, on the ground. The think tank cannot work. Most of the foreign staff have been pulled out. And then you had all this um, budget opportunities, this need to know what was happening. And we said we can fulfill this need because we have trained local media um, workers across the country. And we started doing research, so collaborating uh, with Research Republic, uh, which is a think tank that was created 10 years ago in, um, in Myanmar, and they provide confidential reports. Um, and then we publish with them uh, cyber, uh, a report about cybersecurity in Bosco Myanmar. Um, and then uh, it's it's long report. Huh? You can see I will not open them. It's fifty page each. But uh, it, the idea was to teach young journalists to work with young researcher, and then to get a comprehensive uh, uh, idea of the situation that were both uh, compelling in a telling a journalistic way, but also with the academic context. Um, so this one was about all the economic. Um, difficulties in the country and how people are coping, how people are resisting. Our last one published is about the wall that uh, is being built at the moment between China and Myanmar. And so we use, we, we choose topics where we have people, but we will, uh, that are of international interest, of course. So the, the next one will be about um, uh, the pipeline and what's happening along the pipeline from Rakhine to, <coughs> to Kuming. And, um, and then we have one on the situation of women in IDP camps because there are millions of people who are not displaced by the war and what's the situation for them. Um, and we also do, but this, all of this is we provide content, but it's, it's a school. It's to continue the pedagogical, the training, 
that was um, interrupted because of COVID of the crew, because this is this is experience they would have learned by themselves, but now it's not possible. So we continue this this journalism school. We do by by learning, no? So they they get a lot of time, two, three, four months to work on a long feature. Um, and at the same time, we are doing a lot of um, of work on the side. Uh, so we are, we have English lesson on, online every evening uh, to give them also opportunities to to learn more. And um, for the people who are to to flee to Thailand, we help them logistically. Uh, we organize workshop here, um, and um, so the the idea is to provide all opportunities they should have. To continue and to have a future as as journalists as academics, uh, at the same time that we provide very localized, um, verified content. Um, and what we want to do is actually to have Thai journalists and Burmese journalists working together, because most of Burmese people, when they can flee, uh, flee to Thailand. So you have uh, most of the media now who are here, and uh, we're still working with the sources in Myanmar, but we need support. A lot of them have no education papers, so we also help with this, um, getting scholarships, getting um, um, getting them into university, get, getting some paper. <clears throat> um, and this is why I have also invited in the in the talk my two colleagues. So we have uh, we have Keo, um, who is a Thai journalist who was covering before for Thai media Myanmar issues. And then we have uh, we have Nico, who is basically the co-founder of, of the collective because he contacted me first, and he's the journalist from Yangon, and uh, he's the author of the is um, the author of this report. So he researched cyber security for four months, um, and we published this. Uh, and he's also the author of short movies. So if, if you allow me, I would like to show you a short documentary um, that was done by him on this, because we talk on, on Signal and all his audio. I get all his stories by, by audio now. So this is one, this is his experience from the ground. So we do photo research, video, while empowering people in the, in the professional life. Uh, so this is one movie, and we have six like this, and then I will pass uh, a talk. Um, Sorry for my later time. As you know, we have not completed this situation. was two weeks ago and now so many people were attacked by a bomb. Uh, early last night two or three bombs were exploded in the in the city. Uh, I mean I'm okay. At least I I was alive that at least I was alive. I mean I'm okay. I don't know how long we have had in this situation. Every day, every day, I want thinking about my future. How long it takes, and how long we have to wait to end this. Sometimes I was lost my ambition. Sometimes I'm depressed every day. We can add and add and sleep. I have no idea. How do I live in this place? Sometimes I, 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 I wish 
I just go live on a mon alone. But I'm trying to stay strong if I can because I'm just think about okay, I must stay alive. At least I was not dead, I was not getting mad. I'm trying to motivate by my with that. So I will stop sharing my screen. Um, sorry, it was not very organized as a presentation, but you can ask us anything. And, um, and just to finish why we have um, our ideas to have Ty and Bernie's young journalists work together, because obviously they face some of the same issues in their generation. And, uh, and it's about politics, but it's also about the Mekong River. It's, it's so many things that people are, are sharing and have to learn about each other <clears throat> and the, the countries and the similarities in the methods of the, of the leaders and the colonies. And, and there is so much people can learn from each other. So we also organize workshops where people can share their um, um, Ty and Bernice journalists can share their experience of covering protests, of relationship with state authorities, of, of, of prison life, of, uh, of environmental struggle, and how trying to stay safe, and how trying to, um, to do work that will be seen, because we have also this problem that Southeast Asia um, has, uh, has gone a bit in a in a, in a hall of interest and uh, we, we there was some interest for some months at the beginning but then um, it's um, since since the war in Ukraine it's very difficult to get people interested in, in Myanmar and uh, this is also why we uh, we try to expand our our articles we, we we can explore our website we have articles twice uh, twice a month about what we think is the main event and actually um, five days after the invasion of Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian people um, went to protest in front of the Russian embassy in Bangkok. And some Thai people were there and some Burmese people were there. So it was pretty incredible to see this, um, even not regional, this solidarity and people could see the same enemy no? in, the, in the eyes and make connection with um, with business and military power and interest. Um, so we write about this too, uh, how, how the situation in Myanmar is not, is not um, isolated and uh, that it, uh, it says a lot to what's happening in the world. And, um, and of course, Myanmar was, was such a hope for, for a lot of us. And, um, and if Myanmar fall, we have a feeling that um, it's it's a bad trend for Southeast Asia because they were showing something else very imperfect, but it was something else. There was something else, and um, so we try to explain that supporting Myanmar is supporting an, an ID in Asia, but also beyond. That. So you can ask any question you want to my uh, to my colleagues who are also on the ground, and of course to to Miko who did an incredible work, half of the work collective. So. Thank you, and sorry for the time, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lau. Um, so at this point, we will have an open discussion. Um, thank you so much for both of these presentations. Um, I, I invite people to raise their hand using the chat uh, feature or the reaction feature on Zoom. And when the hand goes up, I'll invite you to ask the question and I'll keep track of a queue. Um, Maybe I'll start off with a question um, for Fung Am and Thum. Uh, maybe it's a, a mildly sensitive question, and so you're, you, you don't have to answer it completely if you don't want to, but um, you know, you're, you're students at Fulbright University and you're working on um, a topic that raises certain questions about you know, what's happening in Myanmar. Um, the, I'm curious how you feel about the sensitivity of raising these topics within Vietnam itself. Obviously, you're not talking about the politics of Vietnam in a particular way, um, but you are talking about another country in ASEAN, right? And Vietnam itself has certain obligations to ASEAN, but ASEAN has proven itself to be very um, 
unable to stand up and make any claims, right? And so how do you navigate that situation as young Vietnamese students who are seeing this tragedy, um, but also being mindful of um, your own position? So I think I would like to take the question and if we can have anything to add on, feel free to chime in. But you're right, Eric, that is exactly the, the first thing that we have to think about when, even before we start to have any tangible outcomes of the project. Because we're fully aware that, so apart from the thing that you said about Vietnam being attached to like the non-intervention kind of like, like, like mandate, between certain Asian countries. At the same time, when we talk about events and information that concerns keywords such as rebellion, revolution, and you know, like mm, to you know, like to to resist against a certain sort of you know like government. So those are some of the things that we will have to communicate very very carefully even though that our main goal is to still bring out the, you know, the, the rawest and the most kind of like genuine kind of perspective within the zine. So, so in, in the beginning, we intended to, to make it like a physical kind of publication. So we will have the like hard copies to, to, for people to, to, to get and hold in their hands and get them like if they're interested in. But a lot of that has been have like left aside because of the complications when it comes to print publications and especially under the context of Vietnam, those are one of the things that are considered to be taboo and you know like take into consideration of the, the content itself. So eventually, so we also intended to have like a Vietnamese version and an international version where everything would be in English. So so we we also went through a lot of like stages of consulting with different people who have experience working in, in like independent publication. We call ourselves independent publication. And even though we're receiving help from organization and you know like affiliated organization that we presented in the beginning, but we're still a student-led kind of project and we're providing our own narrative based on the materials that we collected. So a lot of that would not guarantee us like a certain neutrality or you know a certain discourse where we would where we would not be touched by you know like forces that like unwanted forces. So eventually we decided to make the zine entirely in English. First of all to like to, to make the narrative a little more audible among the international community and not limited within the Vietnamese community. And we're participating in, in this project as people so we don't identify, we don't really identify with our own you know, national, you know, like attribution, but rather a group of people who are, who want to, want to pay more attention into the issues that's is happening in Myanmar. So that is like the very premise that we, we really want to make clear so that when readers approach our project, they also have a, a, a much clearer idea on them, on, like where we started and where we are now. So, so that my response. I hope that answered your question though. No, thank you. That was a wonderful answer. Um, Paul Sarno has a question. Forgive, forgive me for uh, some basic <laughs> basic question, but uh, is the, how often is the zine published? How many issues have you brought out? And um, is it, I assume it's in paper or give me the details, please. Uh, so I can take this question. Uh, so this is our first publication. Uh, we have been working on this own sole publication since uh, like the end of October. And, uh, but for future plans, well, uh, uh, we, we don't promise any new publication or kind of established publication, but we do have uh, articles, blog posts, and uh, events, which we would very gladly be uh, co collaborating with Southeast Asia dudes as well as uh, Seam from Yale uh, to uh, 
to have like cross uh, promotion as well as like uh, uh, like have our articles uh, uh, co-write or like have uh, collaborations on writing articles and conducting uh, interviews or researches if possible. Um, uh, the, the focus of our collaborations, uh, we, we, we really want to, fo to collaborate with uh, more youth organizations and youth-led uh, movements uh, from Southeast Asia and from the international community to raise awareness about uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the crisis in Myanmar, the humanitarian crisis in Myanmar. We, we want to focus on young and independent youth-led and people-led pro-democracy projects uh, because we are also independent, we are also young and we, and, and often these groups, the people, the youth are often like the marginalized voices. And we want to like, if we go and we rise and we rise together, we want to like uh, surface their own work as well as surfacing their voices, uh, their narratives about what is actually happening in Myanmar. Um, uh, for, uh, for now, we only know that uh, about visual rebellions, uh, not know, but like have connection with visual rebellions and Southeast Asia movement at Yale, but uh, there are many other um, uh, organizations as well as uh, people who are um, out, who are out there. For example, uh, there there was a youth-led podcast about Myanmar uh, on Instagram, and I really want to collaborate with that uh, that podcast, but uh, I haven't reached out to them yet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Eric. Why do you have a question? Yeah, I have a, um, I guess a similar question for both of the, 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 the participants. One, is, it's basically, I'm kind of, I'm just curious to know more about your interactions with your respective peers and colleagues and what their responses have been. So for Tom and Fuang An, and you know, like other other students at the university, other students in Vietnam. I don't even know if there's other students and association groups in Southeast Asia. And for Laure, I'm just wondering about more established kind of, you know, as a photojournalist collective, what about more established photojournal, you know, or uh, journalistic media groups and organizations or even advocacy groups, uh, NGOs, whatnot. Um, so, yeah. So I think from from for for uh, our project from our place through front line, uh, like I said in the beginning, it's it's an it's a it's a very it's an extremely independent kind of project that involves. So like two of us, like me and Fungan, we are the 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 main editors of the zine. So we are in charge of you know. Like, uh, collecting the materials in very close and discreet collaboration with uh, friends uh, from uh, the Interim University Council, University of Yangon. So a lot of these people have like venture out there into the battlefields as well into the IDP camp to actually collect the interview. And all of those would be entirely in Burmese or, uh, or like local dialectics that would meet like another person from the same team to actually translate them so that we can like acquire the material entirely in English or like language, you know, language barrier is something that we also consider for this project, but we're fortunate to have friends that are that are very passionate about the project itself as well, very capable of, of coordinating, coordinating with us during the editorial process. So, so everything happened in a very, you know, like case by case kind of like basis. And sometimes internet connection would not allow, you know, like, like continue a kind of conversation to go on. So sometimes we'll have to take breaks between, uh, within the, the process. So 
So eventually, a lot of the materials that we were not able to get uh, would be let out, and, and perhaps in the future they may reappear on uh, the category of blog posts on our website. But uh, but again, uh, everything in the in, in our project is very organic. I think that's the word. The fact that we, you know, each other both as friends and as colleague, and and we just try to showcase in the end what we have on like what we have in our hands. And I'll often jump to Fungan is that this zine has an expiry date due to the urgency of of the matter that that, that it wants to communicate. So so with the opportunity from from uh, from uh, Yale and the, the Brown Bag series, as well as for future co collaborations with Seen, we want to to make this scene appearance as prominent as possible so that more people would get to read it. So like uh, that's that's our main goals for perhaps for the next two months. And, and I hope that answers your questions before I pass it over to Logan. Um, so um, the first portfolio of picture I show you, um, so they were published in Mediapart, but we also publish long investigative feature on Mediapart, and Mediapart is the leading investigative media in France, so it's in France, but some of it was translated in English, so that was our main um, um, collaboration for media, and then um, for the research part, our research was financed by the United States Institute of Peace, which had a big UZIP, which had a big uh, presence in Myanmar um, for the coup. Um, so they they gave us the budget to do what they couldn't anymore because their stuff couldn't work anymore. So we it was financed by UZIP and um, and supported also by Article 30, which is a renowned Think Tank about business and human rights was founded by Matthew Mullen, uh, was a long term teacher in, the, in a Bangkok university and who is now back in the US. And then we have collaboration with um, research centers or journalistic centers in Bangkok for the moment. So we, we have three photo exhibition now. Uh, so our photo exhibition was shown at the Foreign Correspondent Club in Thailand at SEA Junction, which is this research center about Southeast Asia. And then we have one at the moment in The Hague, um, in the city hall in the Netherlands in The Hague, because we want to reach um, other countries. So, um, so this are our collaboration. And uh, we also at the moment have a partnership with um, um, in terms of photo especially. So SOPA Image, it's a big photo agency that has been created recently in Asia. Uh, so we will open an account and they have, um, they have access to Getty Image now. So um, our, our picture, our best selection of picture would be available on, on SOPA Image. So we're also trying to teach about integrating and use photo agency how to select your picture, how to, so we, we work for SOPA image and then Saka Photo, which is a collective also uh, who helps um, photojournalists in Myanmar since the coup. Um, we collaborate, they help us getting access to safety training um, that we then give to our team. Uh, so everything about cybersecurity, safety training, uh, mentorship, so we work with established photo collective to get the um, advice and to, to help each other. Yeah, uh, but for sure, if the picture on Getty image, that would be much easier no? to disseminate in international media. Um, and we have, um, we, we work also with, with hard stories that I want to start, say a word about, because it's a colleague who was helping us from the very beginning from this project. And he founded this um, media two years ago now, one, two years ago, about human rights defender in Thailand. So every feature stories, every pe uh, people who fight for, for gender rights, for uh, environmental rights, for political rights, um, will have the story feature on this media. There is no advertisement. Uh, it's good quality um, picture and feature. 
And basically what he does for Thailand, we try to do with Myanmar and the, and the idea is to have a, um, a regional feature investigative media at the end. So we start with Thailand and Myanmar. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to uh, add in that uh, is uh, uh, we really uh, for for our interaction with colleagues and uh, teammates. We really uh, because we are also uh, very young and we are also uh, only undergraduates and we just first start with uh, doing this kind of work. Um, uh, I really uh, we really look up to. Uh, our collaborations and as well as uh, cons uh, as as interaction uh, with um, more established uh, organizations like Visual Rebellion and as well as like uh, other uh, as our peers from from Yale to um, learn more about how to do better interviews or have uh, more uh, dynamic uh, to 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 surface and highlight more dynamic perspectives of, of the cool of the people's life. And uh, we really have uh, big ambitions to like produce good contents, yeah. especially uh, produ uh, providing uh, insights into what this, what life is like for uh, post in post-school Myanmar. And we, we actually wanted to, to add a page, uh, we're discussing this this week, add a page on, a, on our website to promote the work of other groups, um, because I think it's really important to, um, yeah, to have some solidarity. Nobody's doing this for profit, and it's like helping each other to, um, to get our own work and to collaborate. Um, uh, for example, we do this for, for photo exhibition also. We collaborate um, with... Um, the Burma Women Organization, Women Organization of Myanmar. So they provided half of the picture from women in the streets, uh, and we provided half of it. And, and then we, we make collaboration with civil society groups inside Myanmar too. Um, and I think it's really important to show the work of, of other people um, and, and to promote it. Uh, yeah. And we also try to. Um, um, you, uh, so, uh, you, your colleague was mentioning this about the Burmese version, of course, it's really important. So now uh, Nico, who is with us now, no? is, is the one who is um, um, responsible for the Burmese version. So now we started, he's finally in, in safety with us, so he can work and um, he provides the Burmese version for our social media channel and he disseminates our posts into Burmese uh, Facebook groups that I will never have idea about, no? So he knows all this Generation Z uh, geek uh, fa anime uh, Facebook group <laughs> with just 3 million people and you never heard of it, 3 million thing, and it's like... So um, our work was much more um, shared since we have Burmese social media post, of course, who are shared in the right place. Um, and we are waiting for our next grant to be able to translate our website in Burmese, the whole website. So that's the idea, yeah, to reach so, also. So just yeah. a, I just want to interrupt because we have a question from uh, Tida, who has been active with Penn Myanmar, with one of the founders of mm. Penn Myanmar, and also is a leader of Penn International now, and I think mm. can speak to some of these kinds of connections. So Matida, you have a question, go ahead. Uh, not much question. I just want to appreciate, you know, I really, really feel so grateful to the work of these two projects. And I think uh, on the ground, the highest, violent uh, area is right now is the kind division and McGuay division. Hopefully we can raise more awareness about the burning of the whole villages and arresting and the killing people there and then uh, raising fundings for them too, not just for the other area because the, the most violent areas are these areas. And then uh, another issue is, I might say, for the uh, riders and the, some other people, it's really have no platform to uh, 
to keep their livelihood <laughs> indeed even though they can make they can create but they cannot uh, make earning out of it and they have so much uh, problems facing till now so th- this is big big challenge for them to keep going on so this kind of the platform will be a little bit helpful for them if they can be reached out or if they can reach out to you, something like that. So I, I will uh, try my best to help more uh, reaching out to them and reaching back to you, something like that. That's what I can also do, but uh, it's still very hard for them to keep their livelihood under their rear pen name, something like that. It's still very much uh, challenging. You know, even though we are safe, right now what they do is they revoke the citizenship. So I can also be revoked my citizenship, and then they also cease the, the cease and raided the homes and yeah, the confiscated the homes and the publishing houses. That's kind of the atrocities is going on. That's why the situation. Uh, this kind of situation, I, I do hope to be shared. And also the arbitrary arrest is not just limited to the adult, but also to the kindergarten kids. You know, if they cannot arrest the, the parents, they simply arrest three years old uh, yeah, kids, something like that. So this kind of very uh, big atrocities will be uh Publish, I, I do hope. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matida. I think that raises a really important point about the ways in which our acts of solidarity also have to think very strategically about how we can care for people on the ground whose risks are so much greater than, you know, even though we may put some labor into something, um, the risks on the ground and very basic questions of livelihood and how we can come up with technologies to transfer some of those necessities at the same time as making the, the, the knowledge available to the world, right? There's multiple issues that are happening at the same time. So thank you for raising that, Matida. Um, Lisa Bruton, I think this will be our last question. Um, and then uh, we, we, when we're finished with the Q&A, we can also hang out a little bit in an informal session, but this will be our last formal question. Hi, Lisa, thank you. Hi, hi. Thank you so much, everybody. Great, int- such interesting projects. Um, thanks for sharing them. Part of my question was already answered, I think, by uh, Laura, is it, um, from Visual Rebellion. I wanted to ask about uh, how you're supported. And I'm assuming that from our place to the front line is supported by your university in Fulbright. Um, and that kind of leads me to the question of, how you kind of perceive of these projects kind of in the longer run? Are these sort of, are you sort of thinking about these as eventually sort of archival projects? Are you thinking about them like uh, as a sustainable ongoing kind of thing? I'm just wondering if there are any ideas about for the networking, especially from the, from our place to the front line folks. I mean, we see the wonderful like expansion of the Milk Tea Alliance among you know many more regional countries and i'm wondering if there's a chance to maybe do that with your if that's something you're thinking about so kind of what where are you thinking about these projects as you go forward um and and especially for yeah i mean for both for both of you so maybe visual rebellion can go first and uh we can go after yes um so the um, the grant we received at the beginning were on a um, production basis no you you get some budget to produce a specific thing and now we are trying to we applied um, now to apply for grant uh, for functioning costs uh, to be able to function for a year um to to have some some income for our team and to have some emergency funds to have the budget for the english lesson um, so we are aiming for um, administrative functioning costs that we ask in the grants. 
the, our first year of operation was like showing what we can do. And now we, we would like to, to be able to finance um, a proper newsroom. Um, I also wanted to add that everyone has always been fed. Um, what, what they produce for us, the research, for the research, for the picture, for, and I try to apply uh, the same weight that um, international media are applying. So you get what I should get and, um, and you produce something. Uh, but for me, the long term, as I said, visual rebellion is 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 what you create after after a shock. Um, but my long term idea is um, is to provide the opportunities and the skills and the resources uh, for the team to be able to stand by themselves uh, as freelance journalists to make a career like, like we do, um, and then they. Uh, for example, I'm I'm supporting them to enter in university to pursue the studies, or or we we support them to to apply for jobs in in international or Burmese media who are, look, who are looking for for contributor. So I I would consider that my work is done when every one of a student is relatively safe. As, a, as an income and as a job and as collaboration and do the career that he should have done. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's a content project, but for me, it's also a, a pedagogical project. And it's not out of, of course, I have a lot of affection for them, they are my student, but it's not out of, of charity. It's like this region needs trained young investigative journalists um, to, 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 um, to move forward politically too and in a societal level and and my job is being a journalist being this so this is where i can contribute and i truly believe that if um, people are given the um, the technical intellectual critical skills uh, to provide the information that the people need it's it we contribute somehow to to a change in society and and as we know that this information is such a problem in Myanmar I mean there was a lot of pointing down at Myanmar but it's something that we see in every country but the the Myanmar case has been uh, researched a lot because it was intense and it was focused on Facebook and it was focused on this very uh, horrible event <clears throat> uh, against the Rohingya community and there was all this thing it it um, it represents there is a big problem no there was a big problem and uh, how do you move beyond this um beyond the pointing down and burmese people because this is not the solution no? and it's like how do you uh, what's the problem what's the root problem of this information and nationalism and all of this and um, for me it's, it's putting people together and, and time uh, regional journalists talk to each other see there is common issues uh, how we work together because you also in, in the school system, there is also a lot of, of misconception about all the neighboring countries. So, and people don't, don't are not taught much about other countries and the regional situation. And it's and the multi alliance, as said, Lisa, is was something really important. And um, and Hong Kong and Myanmar are, so, are, are really important and needs to be supported. And our way is to um, teach. Uh, investigative reporting to teach how to deal with international media, with international clients, simply so you can have the, the chance to have a career like, like all of us here, this, despite the, um, the terrible situation in the country. Um, so yeah, in short, <laughs> we try to get grant for annual <laughs> um, functioning and then um, I, I, as I said, I would consider that my job is done when all of them as a, um, as a stable situation, uh, yeah, and can do the work they, they should. Uh, but Visual Rebellion will always be open. It works on a volunteer basis for, for the people who contribute. Yeah, paid, but for the people behind who help run the website, um, it's volunteer and it's photo editor, video editor, uh, journalist. Uh, because we, we we believe that you need to um, 
to to share your your knowledge at a critical time like this because if we don't we don't do it now um there, there is not a better time than now that changed the, the media landscape in Myanmar and uh, we work with a small group of people but it has repercussion because they work themselves in local media in Myanmar so what they learn we will have repercussion in the whole community local community of journalists um yeah so. thank you can i hear from the front line to place sure. it but yeah from the other group thanks um, thank you so much uh so maybe i will talk first and then uh tell me if i miss anything uh you can follow up and uh, so be about the funding and uh the affiliation with uh fulbright uh we currently uh so the for for the zine publication until now, uh, we haven't had any funding, or we have, an, um, like we, we we didn't have need to like spend any um, money on the project. But uh, now you you are mentioning about the funding as well as um, the uh, how to keep the project financially uh, alive. Um, I, we we haven't talked talked about that. We we just think about like how to surface and how to bring people's voices uh, to 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 the international community and especially the Southeast Asian youth, the Southeast Asian uh, region, um, and uh, may. As uh, Laura was speaking uh, I, about the, the, the unpaidness of uh, the, the journalists as well as uh, the, the, the people who work in uh, media in, in Myanmar, uh, I also know about the case of um, uh, uh, civ civilian reporters also raising funds uh, like uh, by themselves on social media name platforms, namely Instagram, to fund for their own traveling. Like, uh, for example, if they join the people De people's defense force, they need to like have their own stipend. Uh, no one is gonna provide them that, and they raise fund themselves. So maybe um, uh, uh, we we we're, we're just a, just a group of students, but just a. It is just something that popped out of my head when I think about it. So maybe in the future, some organizations um, can can like try to like have a more established way of uh, helping these uh, civilian reporters as well as indep independent independent journalists to um, get paid for what they're doing, and um, in, in order to sustain the 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 flow of um, news into about uh, Myanmar. And um, but there's also um, <laughs> thank you to Eric. Uh, so there's also um, another thing that I want to raise is which I, I haven't seen anywhere where people discuss this is the gray zone of the um, the, 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 um, the revolution. Uh, they are, so we, we have already all, always see the revolution as something very binary between the military and the people and between the military and the CDM, but there are like uh, also soldiers, defect, defectors from the military trying to join the CDM. Uh, they, as, as we, we, you, you all may have known, uh, the, 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 the military junta has a very separate, uh, system, uh, come, uh, in, in, alongside the civilian, uh, government system in Myanmar. That's why they sustain until the present day. And they are, they are defectors, soldier defectors, um, from calling for help from uh, 
Myanmar who who want to defect the military junta, but they have family and they have uh, other strings attached to the the, the Temadol that they uh, haven't been able to, and they have not received as much uh, help from the international community as the CDM, uh, as the CDM and and the um, and, and the civilians uh, when it comes to uh, doing the revolution. Uh, I, I I personally consider them as like the gray zone of the revolution. Yeah. Uh, Tom, do you want to follow up? So uh, circling back to to list of questions about what our next step would be like would be like uh, given that we are so for so for this specific project we as Fung mentioned we did not receive any funding from any institution whatsoever and everything was done based on our like daily interactions with uh, the students and, and 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 friends from from Yangon University and. And, and due to the overwhelming kind of like urgency of, of the of the zine publication, we solely focused on that very uh, that that one specific thing to work towards. And now, uh, and now we just started thinking about you know like what the next step for us would look like. But, but for the next two months, I think we'll try our best to get into events like these. So again, thank you, Eric and and Brad Axley team for creating this this opportunity for for us to, to talk about our project. So, so, so yeah, uh, pray yourself for, I think, more future updates about how we are gonna reimagine the project itself. But again, for the next two months, I think we're focusing, we'll be focusing on promoting the zine to uh, the international community. Thank you everyone for this fantastic conversation. We're at the end of our time, I'm gonna, stop recording but first i want to record us uh, giving a round of applause to to the speakers and the, and the group thanks law tom and fungang this is really exciting